There ain't nothing wrong with him. Put your hand on your heart. Sometimes we have to examine ourselves, see what's wrong with us. And, you know, you catch people that are immature in the Lord, they're always blaming the Lord for things. And sometimes we blame the devil for things and unwise decisions we've made. They can't nobody say amen to that. We need the wisdom of God. Amen. How many pray this morning a dangerous prayer? Lord, give me wisdom and understanding. Give me wisdom and understanding, Lord, in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom and understanding. I want to make wise decisions. If I make wise decisions, the Lord is going to bless me. Amen. Amen. Melissa, would you come this morning and sing something for us? Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to have the Smiths with us again this morning. You know, in the, in the, in the Porter family, uh, I've got the history of it. And uh, the Smiths and the Porters are always marrying. Every, every so many years, the Smiths and the, every 50 years, the Smiths and the Porters marry. And so it got so bad, they even called them Porter Smith and Smith Porter, first names. Well, about 10, 12 years ago, my daughter married a Smith. It happened again. And we were involved in a car accident. I broke my femur. My that's the biggest bone in your leg. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, when I got, we were sitting there waiting on the ambulance, and I didn't think nothing really happened to me because I felt no pain. I just felt like I bumped my head a little bit and had a little sore. There was no knot or anything like that, but. I thought, that well, that's all I did, you know, just bump my head. So they, when I tried to get out of the car, I couldn't move my leg. So I'm thinking, okay, what's wrong here? I can't move my leg. It's not moving. I looked down, and my knee was swollen about as, almost as big as a basketball. And when we, waited on, we were waiting on the ambulance to come, and when the ambulance got there, the paramedics were amazed that I was not hysterical, not screaming in pain. I was talking to them like I'm talking to you right now. And when I was sitting there and my leg was at bent at an angle and they had it propped up on a cement block, my foot. And the paramedics came and he said, he said, we're going to have to straighten your leg out in order to put it on the splint and get you in the ambulance. He said, it's going to hurt really, really bad. In fact, you'll probably be screaming in pain. He's, I'm, li- I'm just going to warn you. And I looked up, I was laying there and I looked up and I said, God, you've brought me this far and I know you can bring me the rest of the way. When I looked I l- and I said that prayer and I looked at the paramedic and I said, okay, you can go ahead and straighten my leg out now. He said, ma'am, it's already on the splint. I didn't feel a thing. (laughs) Now, I was in the hospital for about a month. I was in traction for about three months and a cast for six. Now, did I experience pain? Yes, I did. But through all that, I learned that God is still my healer. See, I wasn't supposed to be walking. I was supposed to have have surgery, and the doctor said I wouldn't walk again. Or if I did, I would walk with a cane or walk with a limp. 
So God, I know, healed me. Amen. Was told I wasn't supposed to have children. I got two beautiful children right now that God gave me. Hallelujah. And you know, when I think about all the things that God has done for me, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground listen to this now when i think about the lord how he saved me how he raised me how he filled me with the holy ghost how he filled me to the uttermost when i think about the lord how he picked me up and turn me around how we place my feet on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise it makes me want to shout Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the most when I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all Of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. If you know this, sing it with me. When I think about the Lord, when I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think How he picked me up and turned me around. How he placed my feet on solid ground. It makes me want to shout. Come on, shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Come on, sing it. It makes me want to shout. Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It makes me one shout. Come on, sing this. You know it. How great.
how great thou art because he is so great and he's so mighty amen hallelujah oh he's so wonderful hallelujah jesus let's stand if you can if you're able you're gonna be sitting in a few minutes anyway thank you melissa the healer who's our savior who's our everything he's our all in all we give him the glory the praise the honor 
Amen. For healing us, for delivering us. How many has been delivered from demons? I had so many on me, I wasn't possessed, but I had a lot of baggage. Oh, Lord. It was an instant and progressive deliverance. You don't know what a mess he found me in. Was you an alcoholic? No. Didn't drink. Was you a drug addict? No. Didn't didn't take drugs. Was you a homebody? Yeah, I was a homebody. But I was bound up with so much stuff. I inherited some of it. Some of it I developed myself. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of it you can't blame it all on your forefathers. First Corinthians verse 11. I love this right here, this this scripture right here. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. When God convicts us of something and we judge ourselves, we repent. God doesn't judge us. But when we're judged, we're chastened of the Lord. And, and Ricky mentioned that word disciplined this morning and, and if you went to Hebrews 12 which we're not going there it talks about the discipline of the Lord the chast, chastising of the Lord the discipline of the Lord I'm glad he disciplines me that means I'm his child I'm not illegitimate I belong to him that we should not be condemned with the world that's amazing We've been judged by the Lord. If we, if we judge ourselves, we won't be judged by the Lord and there won't be any con- condemnation. We won't be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. Now, they was having some problems in this church. This is a Corinthian church. This Paul came into Corinth and you know, they were idol worshipers, they were pagans, and he he started this church, and uh, he was teaching these people. They had come out of paganism, out of worship, and all kind of stuff, and Paul was teaching them about the Lord. And you don't know what, it, 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 lost people are self-centered people. It, they're takers. They're not givers. Lost people, it's all about me and it's about nobody else. And so that's where they were. They, they were growing in the Lord. Uh, you can have a powerful church and still have problems in it. There's, there's no church, I don't care how big, small, that doesn't have problems sometimes because of our humanity, our human nature. So this this did, and, and Paul was bringing an order. God was bringing an order through Paul. The fivefold ministry that is, is, a, is a ministry of order, of God's government. Uh, so that's what he was doing. He was, he, he, they, they, were, they were having love feasts, and they were arguing who was going to get the biggest piece of chicken. And who was going to get the most to eat and who was going to sit with who and all this stuff, that, that's what he was dealing with. There was confusion in, in the house. And so he said in verse 34, and, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home. Don't, don't you know, come to one of these feasts to, to fill up and, and ignore the poor and sit at the highest part of the table. That you come not together unto condemnation or for judgment, and the rest will I set in order. Now, this is what I love right here. This is what hit me this week. And the rest I will set in order when I come. God wants order in the church. I see people get out of order sometimes. People will be praising God, and they won't praise him. That's out of order when it's time to praise God. How many know that? 
Somebody said, well, are you afraid somebody will get in the flesh when we worship in God? Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm afraid somebody will get in the flesh. I'm afraid they'll just lock themselves down <laughs> and won't bless God. Come on now. We worship God how? In the spirit. So Paul said, I will set in order when I come. Now you think about this. Everything that God does is in order. God is a God of order. You find a life that is in chaos, it does not have the order of the Lord in it. God's order is something beautiful that causes us not to be takers but givers. Givers. The body is... is it has to learn how to take and how to give. Certain parts of my body are takers at times, but other times they're givers. Sometimes I don't want to lay down at night and sleep and my body wants to keep going, but there's, I have to lay it down and close my eyes and my eyes don't want to be closed because it likes what it's seeing. It's just busy. But it has to give in to the rest of my body for sleep. Because if you don't sleep, you'll die. So that's what order does. You know, Nathan and I was talking a while ago, Luke 11. I don't want you to turn there. That's a, that's a perfect example of getting order into your lives where Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's rest in order. When everybody else is frantic and everybody else is upset about what's going on around them, order will bring peace. Order will bring a stability to a situation that is shaken if you get in the natural. God's order is a blessing to every individual. It's a blessing to the church house. It's a blessing to every individual. Jesus was the perfect example of God's order. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And Nathan was talking about the yoke. If it didn't fit the, the, the ox in the right way, the ox's back would begin to bleed, and it would bleed to death. But they had that yoke that fit just perfect. God has a yoke that will fit you that is just perfect, that will bring his order in the house. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in my life as it is in heaven. God has an order for us. But that goes on. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. This is, this is the whole thing. We have to humble ourselves and continually learn about the Lord and what he has personally for us because he has a purpose for each one of us. It is the perfect will that he has for us. Hallelujah. And in that place, we will be blessed and we will become a blessing to other people. Come on now. Why did God bless Abraham? That he might be a blessing to others. He wanted to bless Abraham, but he wanted to be a blessing to others. So there has to be order in the house. Jesus came with a purpose. His eternal purpose was to redeem us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we all, I want you to look at Philippians 2. I love to be in God's perfect will because I have no fear there. If I know I'm getting on a plane and going somewhere or I'm getting in a car, I'm getting in a car and going somewhere and I'm in God's perfect will, there's no anxiety there. I don't care if I run out of gas. <laughs> Glory to God. I don't get away. <laughs> There's a peace there. There is a peace where there is God's order. Paul said, all I need, I'm coming. Now, what I need to do is bring this, bring order in this situation. If you bring God's order into a situation, something begins to happen that is beautiful. Philippians 2, uh, Philippians 2, look at it. Let's see. 
I'm going to read from verse 1. This is, this is called, if you were to Bible school, this is called the kenosis of Christ. This is the emptying of himself in heaven to become a seed in the womb of, of a virgin. He emptied himself of all of his godly attributes. What did he do? He walked in order here on earth. He did what he saw the Father do. That's what I want to do. If I feel an unction to go pray for somebody and lay hands on them, I don't care if it's in the airport. I don't care if it's in the hotel. I don't care if it's in the restaurant. I don't care if it's in church. I'm going to move in the order of God. Somebody's going to get blessed. Hallelujah. We're so involved with ourselves that sometimes we forget God's order. You say, well, I, 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 don't, I don't have the relationship I used to have with God. Can I tell you that habit is the greatest creator of passion? If you will discipline yourself to do something every day and meet with God every day, order will come into your life and it will increase if you increase that relationship. Your footsteps will be, somebody give me the word, ordered by who? Whew. How many like to have that? It's available. Hallelujah. Jesus never moved unless he saw the Father move. He had order in his life. So many people want the blessings of God without the order of God. Jesus said, come unto me. He said, learn of me. Learn of me and you, you'll find rest unto your soul. So many people are in anxiety. They're anxious. But I tell you, God can bless you in the middle of a recession. God is not limited. Are you with me? When I find his order, I find his blessings. Because you cannot disconnect obedience from blessing. You cannot disconnect faith and obedience. They work together. People say, well, I'd like to be able to do what somebody else does. Might not be what he wants you to do, but he's got you picked to bless somebody and they can't, nobody on this earth do what you do because you're different than everybody else. Hallelujah. I want to read verse, two, verse one. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, any fellowship of spirit, of any bowels, I've got to read this to connect the other. Fulfill you my joy that you may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. How many of you know we've got to be in one accord with God? We've got to be in one mind with God. Peter got all out of order, went fishing. God said, you're supposed to be in Jerusalem. <laughs> I can't bless you in Capernaum right now. I've, you've got a lot of blessings in Capernaum, but at this, at this time, you've got to go back to Jerusalem to get the blessing that I've got for you. And you've got to get in my order and seek my face. Go where I send you in the upper room and seek my face and seek me. Get rid of these fishing nets and obey me. An order came into Peter's life right there that we're still blessed reading about what God did through Peter. In any fellowship of spirit, in the Bibles, of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Boy, I tell you where you got strife and vain glory, there's no order of God. It's that take thing. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind, how many know when you got the mind of Christ, you got order? All kind of people judge you about what you do, and, but no man can judge you because you have the mind of Christ. Come on. You do strange things. You do different things. You're not in the pattern. You, 
you're, you're, you're making a new pattern because God has a pattern for your life that won't fit somebody else's life. Well, I want to be like John D. Rockefeller. Well, you can't be like John D. Rockefeller, but you can get the, you, 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 you can get the blessings of God, not pattern after him, but let God make your own pattern for you. Hallelujah. Look not after a man after his own thing, but ever man also in things of others. Let this mind be in you, which also was also in Christ. It was a mind of order. You'd be surprised how many people's minds they sit in church and they and they look fine and they praise in God, but their minds out of order because it's going. Jesus didn't have that kind of confusion. I believe I could have the mind of Christ. Come on now. Let this mind be in you which also in Christ. This spirit, this attitude, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He was God. Made himself of no reputation. Took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Obedience brings an order in a person's life. It doesn't matter what they're facing. The grace of God is there to help them through it or to take them out of it, one or the other. This is the safest place anybody could be is in the order of God. Look at Romans 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people ain't even got no water in their house. <laughs> That's why the Bible says if a person don't have order in their house, they're not going to have it in their house. Yeah, nobody get that. <laughs> I believe in order. I believe in God's order. Hallelujah. His word is not suggestions. They're commandments. Well, you know, we are under grace now. We can just live like we want to. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you're under grace, you don't want to live like you want to. What you were doing is so stupid, you want to change it. I don't want to live like I used to. I want to live what God's got for me. He's got life and a life more abundantly. Hallelujah. I get up excited every morning. Well, what are you excited about? I don't know what the Lord's going to do. <laughs> I, I, just, I don't know what he's going to do. I'm going to do something, you know. He, I may ask him a question one day, and it may take him 24 hours or two weeks to answer me, but he's going to answer me. God talks to me. One time they, Billy Graham was going to the Today Show, and they said, Rumors out, Brother Billy, that God's dead. Can you verify, confirm that? He said, no, sir. How, well, how do you know he's alive? I just talked to him before I left the hotel and he talked to me. Whew. He wants to be so involved in our lives that we have a life that we have the peace of God that passes all understanding. The joy of the Lord becomes our strength. It doesn't mean you don't go through hard times. It just means when there's order in your house, inside of you, that the grace of Almighty God is there to turn that situation around and bring some good out of it. Hallelujah. Romans 8. Verse 26, if you will, please. Romans 8. I love that, chapter, Romans chapter 8. You've got to get the Word and the Spirit involved in this. Well, God's going to come over at 2 o'clock in the morning in the morning and read me the Word, you know. God wakes me up every morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Roy, I'm going to read the Word to you. The Holy Ghost said, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to do the praying. You don't have to pray. Just don't get upset. How many know we have a part in God's order? Somebody say discipline. 
We can discipline ourselves in everything but getting in the word of God. We excuse ourselves. We say, oh, I, I didn't have time. You got time to eat. You got time to sleep. You got time to do everything else. Why ain't you got time for God? Because you don't have order in your house. Order in your house will say this is priority. Man does not live by bread alone, but what? Every word. I got this Monday. <laughs> the Lord gave me so. I, I, by every word that proceedeth forth out of the mouth of God. Why? Because it brings order to your life. And order brings power and power and blessings and peace. Come on now. And the joy of the Lord, because you know in your mind you're not in control, he is. All you got to do is push the buttons and follow direction. Come on now. And the thing begins to work. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That may be my voice trying to adjust. He may be giving me a singing voice. That would be a miracle, wouldn't it? Verse 26, not impossible. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, our inabilities to know what to pray for. How many know that you can pray in the Holy Ghost and pray in tongues? How many also know if you really got a relationship with the Lord, you can get in the Spirit without praying in tongues? You still have a potential of taking control of what you're praying. But I want to tell you, I, I was in spirit yesterday morning. Lord, I prayed so long. I, I, I was worshiping God. I was praying in the spirit. I was telling God how wonderful he is out of my heart, how great, how big he is. And, and, and I was just telling, and I got to pray in, in the Holy Ghost in my own language. You say, how do you do that? Anybody can do it through inspiration. The Holy Ghost will take over your English also. Come on now. You can get there. He can take over your English. And, and you're not praying a selfish prayer. You're praying in the perfect will of God when you do that. Oh, hallelujah. Likewise, the Spirit also help our infirmities, our inability to pray for. We don't know what we should pray for as well. But the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. A lot of people don't understand that, but I, I, know, I know what it is. It's travail. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. God is praying order down in your life when you get in the spirit. Do you know people are so busy and they're so caught up they want everything quick now. They don't want to take time to get in the spirit. They want to pray a little faith prayer, a confession. Oh, I claim it, God. Yak, yak. That works sometimes. But I'm telling you, God ain't going to let you get by with that forever. You're going to have to spend some time with him. You're going to have to give yourself to order in your life. You're going to have to surrender yourself either in the morning, either in the morning, even at noon, even at 3 o'clock or at midnight or at 10 o'clock at night. Somewhere in the day, you're going to have to find time for God because your flesh needs to die. There needs to be an order in your house. Come on now. If you're going to get what God's got for you, if you're going to walk in the level of anointing that God wants you to walk in. You're going to have to listen to him. And if you ain't listening to him, you're listening to your flesh. And I want to tell you something, honey. My flesh ain't no different than your flesh. And when I listen to it, I get in trouble every time. I get messed up. It's good preaching. Hallelujah. You say, well, it's hard. No, it's preaching. It hopes it's falling on soft hearts. But if it's not, it's preaching to hard hearts. You've got you to get that heart all saturated with God's order. God ain't going to change. He, not gonna, he ain't, he ain't going to give in to you. You're going to have to give in to him. If you want it done.
Then, then, then. You hear this scripture misquoted so many times. See, I was raised a Methodist. I was saved in Southern Baptist. I love the Methodist. I love the Southern Baptist. And I started going to Assembly of God Church. Got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I always heard this phrase, all things work together for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That's true. But you've got to go back up to those scriptures I just read. If God's order is not in your house, don't blame him for everything that happens. Because he cannot bless you with a blessing of obedience if you're going to do your own thing. If you're going to do it your way at your time and whenever you get ready. God, I'll spend some time with you whenever I get ready. I just want you to know I love you, Lord. But when I get time, I'll talk to you. When I get time, I'll pick up this holy book. God said, you ain't got no order, man. You ain't got no order in your life, woman. You ain't got no order. You're putting the cart before the horse and you're expecting it to move. It ain't going to move. You know why? There ain't no order in your house. You got to have order. You got to have God's order. It's just got to be his way. Well, I'm so used to getting my way. <laughs> your way is a broad way. I ain't talking about plays either. <laughs> Broadway. Listen, you've got to be somebody that allows the spirit and the word to work in your life. When you allow the spirit and the word to work in your life, then you can say all things are going to work for my good because, because I'm the called according to his purpose. His purpose. When you're stretching for his purpose and you get in his purpose, God begins to multiply and work in your life 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Hallelujah. I don't play around with God. I want the best he got. I want to empty that big room in heaven. They say all that's got all that stuff up there that I need to do what I need to do to fulfill purpose. I want it to be empty when I get to heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, I got so much here. Jesus gets in a boat. He says, go across the other side. He's tired, man. He's been doing all his ministry. He's tired. Anointed people get tired. They need rest, physical rest. So he goes, and he lays down in the ship and, the ship and goes to sleep. There's order in his house. I'm trying to close. There's order in his house. He goes and lays down in the ship and he goes to sleep. A storm comes up. Now, Jesus must have been a sound sleeper. Jeanette can sleep. I can be bang, bang, bang in the house and she's asleep. I'm so jealous of that. I'm so envious of that. Y'all cast that out of me. That woman can sleep. She can sleep through a storm. I lay down. I can lay my head on the pillow and I'm, poof, I'm gone. But a mosquito can light on something in the room and I'm, <laughs> I'm awake. Jesus must have been a sound sleeper because 
Man, these disciples, they talk. Oh, Jesus, look at him over there. He's asleep. He's asleep. If he's awake, he'd be excited too. He would be toe up. If Jesus would just wake up, I, I'd like for him to get nervous and anxious like me. If he'd just get up, say, banged on something, trying to wake him up, and they can't get him awoke. Can't wake him up. Finally, go over there and say, Master, Master. you know we're about to sink there's a storm Jesus just woke up why he's in the order of God he's under the commission of the most high his father this don't upset him. He just gets up and says, what, 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 why do you have no faith? Why are you so fearful? Why? They didn't get on the boat with the order of God in their mind that they could have possessed. That brings peace. If Jesus, listen, if Jesus, the Son of God, got in a boat with you and said, let's go to the other side, guess where are you going? Hell or high water can't sink you. Jesus woke up and he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the storm. And he stopped and they said, what manner of man is this? Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. We have the mind of Christ. Let me give you one other. Jesus went, he was in a, he, 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 was, he wasn't in Jerusalem, he wasn't in Bethany. He was in another city and they, he got word that Lazarus was sick. That's his buddy, Woody. Lazarus is sick. He stayed there two more days. Eight Probably. Rice and beans. He ate. And then those disciples were looking at him and said, What's so wrong with Jesus? I, I thought he had liked to Lazarus. Dad and I tell you an accident called the Italy, you know, Rome was over this place. <laughs> he said, What is wrong with Jesus? He's eating a pizza and Lazarus is sick. Jesus was not crisis oriented. He was father oriented. The order that was in the father was in Jesus as a man, son of man. He waited two days. Man, what's wrong with Jesus? Peter said, I hope I don't get sick and I'm in another city and I'm depending on him to come over here. And he on me, what's wrong with the master? He waits two days before he moves. When you get in the order of God, other people will criticize you because you see something different than they see. There's a peace that comes with it that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lazarus stunk before he got there. <laughs> but yet later Jesus sat down at the table and eating a meal with Lazarus. God knows what he's doing. He'll tell you what he's doing. If you get his order in your life, he will order your footsteps. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what I want. I don't want this hit and miss anymore, Yvonne, do you? I want the sure thing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's speak to the people on the internet before we go off here. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for listening today. For being on. I'm so anointed. <laughs> to clicking in here. To, <laughs> what do you do? Hit. We're hitting in on the internet. Praise God. We appreciate you so much.
You're such a blessing to us. And we want to thank you for watching today. And we, we hope this message has blessed you and helped you in some way. I, I, just, I just pray the, the order of God in your life. I just pray that you get in the word and get in prayer. And let God minister to you. Listen, whatever you're facing, it's not hopeless. There's always hope with Jesus. Find out what he's saying about your situation. Get his order. Get his mind. And proceed that way. There's wisdom that comes out of this book, out of this Bible. There's wisdom that is revealed through the Holy Spirit. Get a hold of that. I want to pray for you. God, move mountains for people. Lord, people are facing things that... It's just awful. I pray, God, that you would just put your wisdom in this, put your order in this. God, just just let your kingdom government come in this situation. Let heaven come down. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in this situation, Lord, as it is in heaven. Let God's order come. I bind you, Satan. You take your hands off these people. You go from them in Jesus' name. I command sickness and disease to leave. I command confusion to leave. I command every demon that's been sent to cause disruption in your life. I command it to be bound to leave right now in Jesus' name. Bless you. If you don't know Jesus, cry out and ask him to come into your heart. Receive him by faith. He'll come in there. Hallelujah. And I pray that you'll continue watching Liberty Ministries Church International uh, Services because we love you so much and we're so glad that you're a part of our service and you are. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want everybody that, that, that wants God's perfect order in their life, I want you to come up here. I want to pray for you. You need it.